Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to get started in just a minute. I'm going to let a couple more people get on the webinar and then we'll begin in about a minute or so. Okay, I'm going to get started now. Welcome to the Last Minute Prep Giving Tuesday webinar on Mighty Cause. My name is Lisa. I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause, and I'll be the one going through this webinar with everyone here. We're going to be going over some key steps that you'll want to follow as you're going to be planning your campaign for Giving Tuesday. So some of the things that we're gonna be reviewing is first reminding all organizations that haven't done so yet to register, getting your profile page ready, showing you where you can find great resources on the platform, how to begin scheduling your content, making sure that you have a great day of plan uh, strategy together, and as well, making a plan for your follow-up after the event. So let's get started. So first, I'm just going to go over some Giving Tuesday basics for those of you who are brand new to the platform or, or are returning and um, just want some helpful tips and reminders as to how best to get your page ready for Giving Tuesday. So um, first, as I uh, mentioned previously, uh, this year for Giving Tuesday, we have lots of great training and resources available for organizations. And some of the things to keep in mind are the prizes that will be available for nonprofits, which I'll go over, as well as the ability to use our advanced tools um, during Giving Tuesday. You'll have the ability to, uh, to get a trial of all of our tools and features. Some important Giving Tuesday dates. Uh, one, next Tuesday, November 19th, is when early donations open. So you can begin soliciting donations, emailing your donors, et cetera, and donations will count on the leaderboard and towards prizes starting November 19th. November 26th is when registration closes. And of course, December 3rd is the big day, Giving Tuesday. So for prizes this year, uh, prizes will be divided up into leaderboard prizes and power hours. So leaderboard prizes will be based on dollars raised and there will be two groups, small and large nonprofits based off the information you provided during the registration process. Um, and as you'll note here, this year for prizes, we'll, we will be offering advanced subscription plans to organizations that are participating. And same goes for power hours. Uh, we will have two power hours, one that is based off most unique donors, the second based off dollars raised, and the prizes are um, as well advanced plans. Uh, prize information will be emailed out this week and it will be added to the platform as well this week. But just wanted to provide you this information, especially as we begin talking about scheduling content, um, creating a strategy. These are all important things to consider um, as you're building your plan out. Great. And as I just mentioned, of course, if you haven't already done so, you want to make sure that you've registered for Giving Tuesday. So please go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com to register. Um, registering is very easy. Uh, you can simply type in the name of your EIN or your organization name and please make sure to, once you've selected your, your organization, to click select organization. Uh, registration will be on auto approval within, and you should be approved within 24 hours. Um, as well, for those returning organizations, uh, you can add and remove any administrators to your organization profile page. So if there are um, individuals that are no longer in your nonprofit and you want to remove them, you can go into your settings and admin area and remove those and add any new administrators you want to your page. And you can have multiple administrators on an organization profile page. And yes, not to freak you out, but early donations start next week. So again, if you haven't registered 
or you want to double check you're registered, you can always go to the home section of your left hand side dashboard on your organization page and that will provide you information if you're approved, pending, etc. All right, so let's get into some of those details about getting your profile page ready. So in addition to showing you your current registration status on your home page, um, within that area towards the bottom, there's a to-do list. And this is a great opportunity to review what your organization should update on your page. The to-do list will provide you a guideline as to um, the easiest and most effective things to add or update onto your page. So one being the logo. Um, for new organizations, you want to make sure that you input a logo and a background image on your profile page. For returning organizations, you might want to consider um, if you, there is a new image you want to share of your organization, um, how can we make the, your profile page different last year as compared to this year. Um, the next two or three things are your thank you page and your and the description section. Um, so the thank you page is the first page that pops up when a donor makes a donation. And of course, the about section is the description on your organization profile page. Um, these are all things that uh, are in regards to editing your organization profile page. Some organizations are going to be using a fundraising page, which is perfectly okay, and that's wonderful, but these are just related to updating your organization profile page. And then the last step within the to-do list is setting up your EFT, which means setting up direct deposit. Um, you want to make sure that you've set that up because that's the easiest way to receive donations through the platform. If you need to update your EFT, you can go into settings and organization settings and update your EFT there or review the banking information that you've added there. Some additional steps we're also going to be going over um, in more depth in just a second uh, are your suggested donation amounts as well as updating your profile metrics. So we'll get into details in, um, in regards to those in just a second. So as I mentioned, specifically for returning organizations or even new organizations, um, when you're editing your profile page, you really wanna consider what is the story that you're telling donors when you're asking them to go to your Giving Tuesday site and make a donation? For those returning organizations, what's a new story that you can share to your donors that's different than what you had last year? What's going to motivate them to make a donation or maybe even make a larger donation than they did last year? So it's a great opportunity to make sure that you're sharing the mission of your organization and specifically the mission of your Giving Tuesday campaign. So if you are going to be utilizing your organization profile page uh, as your Giving Tuesday campaign page, um, a great thing to do is to add a goal and progress bar on your page so that donors can see what's your goal for your Giving Tuesday campaign and how far are you to reach that goal. For those returning organizations, you may already have this on your page, but you may just want to update it and edit it and make sure that um, it's ready for the event. So to add or update your goal and progress bar, you want to make sure that you go to your left-hand side dashboard on your organization profile page and go to profile page settings. And at the very top, you'll see metrics, like in the images on, the, on this slide. Um, you want to set your financial goal for your Giving Tuesday campaign. And the most important thing is um, making sure to add a calculation date. So since early donations begin on the 19th, that's the date that you wanna set your metrics to start counting from. Um, and as well, within this area, you can decide whether you want to include offline donations and also add a donor count. One other thing that you want to consider or update on your organization profile page is the checkout process that donors will be seeing. And part of that um, is updating your suggested donation amounts, as I mentioned a couple of slides back. Um, this is a really important step into your Giving Tuesday campaign because this is where donors are gonna be making the decision of how much they're willing to donate to your organization. Um, so. 
Within the donation checkout flow, donors will see four options, but there's always an additional fifth custom amount that donors can choose. Um, and when you're deciding on the suggested amounts that you want shown within this area, I would recommend looking back into your overall average donation that you receive. And you wanna make sure that your suggested donation amounts provide donors of various income levels, et cetera, the ability to donate to your organization. You don't want to scare up donors too much by giving them an $1,000 option. And as well, descriptions are a great way to get creative with your Giving Tuesday campaign and provide information on your organization and the impact donors will have. For example, um, something that we've seen before for um, food pantry organizations um, is telling, organiz telling donors that $5 allows them to buy a meal for uh, a person in need or $10 provides this. So sharing descriptions as to the impact for donors um, is a great way to also uh, motivate donors to donate a different amount that they were maybe originally intending to. And you can edit your suggested donation amounts by going to your left hand side dashboard and selecting fundraising and then donor experience. As well within the donor experience, that's where you're also able to find your thank you page. As I mentioned, this is the first page that pops up once a donor completes their transaction. Within the thank you page, you can upload a video, add images, even add a CTA button. Um, for returning organizations, you wanna make sure that you double check the content that you've added here and make sure that any reference to 2018 um, or any outdated information that you've updated accordingly. But this is a great opportunity to also provide donors another uh, um, avenue to get involved with your organization. Maybe you want to tell them, hey, check out the volunteer opportunities that we have on our site. Or if you want to subscribe to our newsletter, here's a link to go to subscribe to our newsletter. There are lots of great opportunities that you can um, you know, forward on the relationship with your donor just through the thank you page. And as you're editing your thank you page on your organization profile page, you just want to make sure that you're saving the edits that you make as well as previewing it and making sure that it looks the way that you want it to look or has the content that you want it to say. Within the same area of the thank you page, so again under fundraising, donor experience, and then the post checkout tab, below the thank you page you'll see your custom thank you message, the ability to customize the email receipt that is sent to donors. Um, as you all know, by participating in Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause, all donors are sent a tax receipt once the transaction is processed. However, if you want to add your own custom thank you message, this is a great opportunity to do so. Within the thank you message, you can add whatever formatting, text emojis, hyperlinks that you want. And again, it's a great opportunity to share with donors um, further ways for them to participate with your organization. Within your nonprofit settings, you'll see a lot of, um, you'll want to make sure to head over there to make sure that all of your information on the back end is updated. So on your left hand side dashboard, if you go to settings, you'll see uh, organization settings and admins. Admins is where you're going to be able to add or remove administrators to your organization profile page. Organization settings will provide even further um, back end opportunities for you to um, update your page. One of the things that you'll want to do is first make sure that you're opted into the pricing guaranteed model and you can review that by um, clicking on one of the top sections of donation fee management. As well, if you need to update your URL for your page, you can do so here. If you haven't used your platform since last, use the platform since last year, and maybe you hid the page previously, you want to make sure that your discoverability is turned on. Discoverability uh, is what allows your organization to be searched within our platform. And as well, through this section, you can also update your social sharing options. So when a donor uh, takes the link to your Giving Tuesday campaign and shares it on social media. Um, that is what it, the image and the text is based off of. 
And then lastly, this is where you'll be able to edit and manage your EFT and legal address information. One of the new things that we've added to the platform that's really exciting is a donor retention report. So th for, this is a um, really great opportunity for returning organizations uh, to be able to track the donors that have donated last year and maybe have or haven't donated this year. So there are two places where you can track your donor retention. One is on your homepage within your metrics that will provide you a quick glance into your um, the last 90 days or last 60 days in regards to your um, retention for your organization. But as well, another space that you can um, review this information is through your donor retention report. And that is found on your left-hand side dashboard under reports. And then you'll see a submenu and you'll find one of the section called donor retention. As you see here in the images, you can actually pull a report period. Um, so if you participated last year, you can pull up 2018 and 2019. And you can specifically look at the donors who haven't donated again. And maybe you want to build an email list specifically targeting those donors. So it's a great resource to have. And if you're new to the platform, it's also a great opportunity to consider after the event for next year, how to um, make sure that you're engaged with those donors and making sure that um, when it comes to your 2020 campaign, that those donors are going to be donating again. Great, so now that we've gone through some of the basics on how to update your page um, and how to manage your profile page, I just wanna go over some resources that are available to you on the platform. Whoops. So if you haven't done so already, the toolkit is actually full of really great resources and varied resources. Um, you can find it on the event site under resources and nonprofit resources. Uh, the toolkit will provide you how to's and walkthroughs, case studies, it even has a checklist for success and planning guide uh, for organizations that need um, just an idea of what to, um, what their email should look like. We have email templates and a social media guide, as well as giving Tuesday logo and graphics for all of your email and um, marketing needs. And we also have um, lots of great um, material in depth if you want to review just how to make uh, your an event, a campaign, a success, etc. So uh, I would definitely recommend after this webinar checking out the toolkit and seeing what will be helpful for you and your organization. We also have all of our past trainings available in our resources section for those of you who weren't able to attend um, the past webinars. We went through general organization page metrics. Um, I'm sorry, basics. Uh, giving Tuesday for small nonprofit, that's how you can re really utilize uh, the event to your um, benefit, social media strategy, and as well as planning rec a recurring giving campaign for Giving Tuesday. You can watch those as at any point as you want, and it may be a great opportunity to delegate one webinar to one staff member on your team, and then having a meeting and discussing what everyone learned and sharing the information. Okay, so let's start uh, discussing uh, scheduling content before and during the event. Um, as I just mentioned, within our toolkit, we do have email templates provided uh, for you to give you an idea of um, the type of emails that you want to be sending out to donors. One of the key things that you want to consider as you're building out all of your email templates is also segmenting your list to hit key audiences. So you want to make sure that um, you segment and dissect the key audience, maybe perhaps based off your recurring donors, the donors who donated to your Giving Tuesday last year, or maybe just the donors who donated to your last fundraising campaign. You want to make sure that those are targeted emails that you're sending out to each group. 
And of course, within your emails that you're sending out, include your Giving Tuesday campaign. And I would actually recommend even in your non-Giving Tuesday centered emails in your routine emails that you send out, that you're providing a link to your Giving Tuesday campaign for people to check out. So for example, your newsletter, or uh, perhaps you have a weekly update or news information, um, provide your Giving Tuesday campaign so that donors um, are getting used to seeing that and are familiar that you are participating in Giving Tuesday and where they can go and make a donation. And of course, as a really good rule of thumb, we always recommend testing your emails before sending out. Um, test with your staff members, with friends, family, your board members, and making sure that everything looks good, that all your links are actually working correctly and going to the right um, donation page. Those are things that can be easily missed, um, but can be ramified uh, or can be fixed if you uh, test that out before. And as well, uh, if your organization uses um, Gmail or even Boomerang or any um, email service that allows you to schedule um, emails in advance, campaign monitor, et cetera, um, make sure that you're scheduling those emails in advance so that you're not having to do that um, you know, live or, or uh, before it gets too busy. As well as I mentioned, with social media, uh, we also have provided great social media strategy and best, best, best practices. Um, highly recommend reviewing the webinar that we had specifically about so social media strategy. There are lots of great tools that you can utilize to schedule your social media posts, such as TweetDeck or even Facebook. Unfortunately, Instagram does not have a scheduling um, tool on their platform. But TweetDeck is directly connected with your Twitter account and you can schedule and um, by date or time the exact post that you want to share on Twitter. Um, and as I mentioned, same thing with emails. Um, scheduling out these posts before it gets too crazy is a great opportunity. And you want to consider also when those power hours are so that you can um, create those targeted posts during those times. Um, Okay, so that's a little bit about um, you know, how you can plan before your Giving Tuesday event, but what should you do day of and how, what kind of strategy should you create for the day of? So for organizations um, that um, have, if you have volunteers or staff members, definitely de delegate the responsibilities for your campaign. Um, you don't want to have it uh, congregated to one individual. Utilize the resources that you have. So perhaps one staff member, uh, they're responsible for social media that day. And another staff member is responsible for um, doing donor outreach on that day. Um, the more hands that you have available to you for that day, the easier the day, uh, Giving Tuesday will be for your organization. So have a meeting before December 3rd, making sure that everyone knows their responsibilities um, and what should be done exactly for that day. Um, volunteers, as I just mentioned, um, or your supporters or your network are a great opportunity to also call to action. Um, you know, seeing before December 3rd, sending an email and seeing what different um, skills or tools people have available to them that they could help out with your campaign um, is a great also opportunity for to get people involved with your organization. Um, during the day, you also wanna make sure that you're keeping track of all of the social media that is um, all the you know tags and posts that people are posting on, of your organization as well as any emails or um, calls that your organization is receiving. While you're posting on your social media networks or emailing your supporters, you want to let them know of any fundraising milestones that you're meeting. And it doesn't necessarily have to be your fundraising goal. Perhaps you have your own internal goals. Maybe you want to meet a certain amount of recurring donors on that day, or maybe you wanna have 
um, three new donors this year than you had last year. Share those milestones with your network to show them the progress that you guys are making on that day and also to motivate them to um, keep going and to um, share the page even more or to donate further. And as well, really make sure that you're paying attention during the power hours time and that you're using that time effectively to communicate with donors uh, that um, you know you either need to receive the most unique donors or uh, the most dollar dollars raised within that time period. And utilize the Giving Tuesday hashtag. Giving Tuesday is an international day of giving. Um, many organizations are going to be using the hashtag on that day for their fundraising. So utilize that as well um, and stay connected with the conversation on Giving Tuesday. So after you have completed Giving Tuesday, you have survived the event. Um, hopefully you've met all of the goals that you've set in place with your team. You want to plan a follow up to all of the donors that have donated to your Giving Tuesday campaign. This is actually one of the most important steps in your Giving Tuesday campaign because this can make the difference of a donor that is um, consistently stays involved with your organization to a donor that simply just falls off and doesn't donate to your organization in the future. Um, and studies have shown that a quick and sincere follow-up is one of the most critical things in regards to having a donor make a future gift. So perhaps you're collecting phone numbers from donors um, on that day. Maybe a volunteer or a staff member can um, you know, volunteer to make a call to every donor that's made a donation on Giving Tuesday. Or maybe you and your team have decided that you're going to be making personal calls to any donor that's donated over $100 or $50 to your organization. Consider those things before the event so that when you are following up, you have that in place. Um, and keep donors engaged after your Giving Tuesday campaign. Send thank you emails and also congratulate donors on, um, you know, helping allow you to meet your goal and stay laying the groundwork for your year end fundraising efforts and your year end fundraising goals. How can your Giving Tuesday campaign facilitate those needs? Um, As I just mentioned briefly uh, about the stewarding process of how to welcome new donors into the new year, as well as your uh, end of year fundraising efforts, sending a thank you email, a phone call, mail a welcome packet. Those are all great opportunities to keep and maintain a relationship with a donor. Um, and of course, you can always keep track of if that donor chooses to donate again through your donor retention report on your dashboard, as I mentioned previously. And I would also consider thinking and brainstorming of ways of how your new donor can get involved with your organization, whether that means that they subscribe to your newsletter or they become a volunteer or uh, they become a recurring donor. How can they get involved with your organization or support your mission even further after your Giving Tuesday campaign? So I'm going to leave the last uh, couple of minutes for any questions that organizations have on the platform. Um, th this slide deck will be available on the Giving Tuesday toolkit after this webinar. So it will be provided there um, in PDF, but as well as you can always go back and watch this uh, webinar as a video. Um, so some people have questions just about logging in and getting access to their profile page. So um, for anyone that is struggling with accessing their profile page, you wanna make sure that you're first logged into the correct email account and that you're logged in as an administrator to your organization profile page. Um, some people get confused about the, your user account page versus your organization page. Um, if you are logged in as an administrator, if you go to the top right uh, circular icon, um, if you place your mouse over there, you should see a place that says dashboard and your organization name, and that will lead you to your organization profile page. Um, 
So in regards to, so someone has a question about saving any edits um, on your profile page. Uh, so it depends on where you're making those edits. If on your profile page in the description or about area, any changes you make are automatic. You don't need to manually save those. Think about it like a Google Doc. Those changes are saved. Um, if you're not seeing that, I would recommend first reloading your page. Um, sometimes it, there may be a five second delay or something. So always reload your page and making sure that you're still seeing those edits. Um, and as well as you making those edits, I highly recommend that you're going back and forth from your profile um, from profile page editor to live page, because uh, profile page editor is where you can make your edits and live page is what donors will see when they're on their page. So you wanna make sure that your formatting and everything you're seeing is what donors will see on the day. Um, if you have any offline donations during the day, offline donations will not be counted towards leaderboards or prizes, so only online donations will be. If you are looking to collect donors' uh, email addresses, phone numbers, their mailing address, email addresses are automatically connect, uh, collected for every organization. If you wanna collect mailing address and phone number, you can do so by going to your left-hand side dashboard on your organization page and go to fundraising donor experience. On the donor experience page, if you scroll to data collection, you can opt into or enable address collection and phone number. One thing to note about that is phone number is an optional question. So address information, if you have that enable, enabled, it will be automatically connected, uh, collected, but phone numbers are, will just be optional for donors. They won't be required to enter that information in. Um, in regards to matching grants on your profile page, uh, should you display them when the event ends? Um, that is a choice up to for your organization. Matching grants totals will not be included in the leaderboard or for prizes. Um, you know, matching grants are there for you to incentivize and motivate donors to make donations um, and to have their donation count even further. Um, so that is your choice if you want to have that continue past December 3rd or not. Um, maybe that's something that, a great way that you wanna incentivize donors to keep donating to you after Giving Tuesday, that you have this match still active. Or maybe you know your grantor just wants to make it a Giving Tuesday campaign match. Um, that's something that you may just wanna talk through with your staff or your team and see um, you know, what is the best plan of action for your organization. Uh, do early donations start November 19th and go through December 3rd on Giving Tuesday? Yes, so early donations begin midnight on November 19th and will go until midnight um, on December 3rd. So you will have that entire time span to collect donations and have that count towards leaderboards and prizes, et cetera. Um, you can, of course, utilize the platform after December 3rd. Uh, that doesn't have to be the last day that you utilize the platform. You can continue utilizing it to collect donations. That's just obviously the end of Giving Tuesday and the end of when um, that those donations will be counted towards leaderboards and prizes. Um, but your the metrics on your page will still count those donations. Um, if you would like to review any resources for um, the, on the platform that are available to you, you want to go to the Giving Tuesday website and go to re the resources section on the top uh, navigation menu. Um, within resources, you'll see uh, nonprofit resources and trainings um, there. The training section will have all the webinars that we have previously had on the platform for Giving Tuesday. And of course, registration ends on November 26th. So you wanna make sure that your organization is registered for the event. Your organization won't be included on the search if you haven't completed registration for the event. So you just wanna make sure that you've completed that step in the process. 
Uh, so for any further questions um, that any individual has, feel free to send to our support, support at mightycause.com. We also have a phone number available. Um, so if you need any help with resetting your metrics or um, setting up a matching grant, uh, reviewing your donations report, please feel free to email our support team. Um, and we have a couple more questions that are just coming in through. Uh, is the Mighty Cause Giving Tuesday page where we can find resources? Yes, so you wanna go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and that will be where you can find resources uh, for your organization. Uh, so should we create a specific campaign for Giving Tuesday? Uh, that's a great question and that's a question we get actually pretty often. Uh, should I create a fundraising page or should I create an organization page? Um, when I answer this question, I typically like to break down first the difference between what an organization page is and what a fundraising page is. So an organization page is the page that is associated to the EIN for your nonprofit. Um, so that's why it's considered your organization page and your organization profile page. A fundraising page is an additional fundraising page that you can create that is still connected to your organization. Um, and usually year round, outside of Giving Tuesday, nonprofits utilize a fundraising page for a specific project or a mission they're trying to raise funds for. So for example, if you're a school, you may have your school nonprofit page, and then you may have a separate fundraising page that you've created to raise funds for a new library. Uh, in regards to your Giving Tuesday campaign, it's up to you if you wanna decide to create a specific fundraising page for your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, some organizations prefer to have a separate fundraising page for their campaign because they like to go back and review all of their campaigns. So they can see their Giving Tuesday 2017 campaign, their 2018 campaign, and their 2019 and then their 2020 campaign. They kind of can go back and reference the content they had um, and have it divided up that way. But some organizations prefer not to have that and it's easier for them just to utilize their primary organization profile page and update the content on their year round. Um, whatever suits your needs and whatever uh, you know your team finds easier for you to manage and organize, but there's no wrong answer for that. Personally, I like having a separate fundraising page because I like always being able to reference previous campaigns, uh, but that's just a personal preference of mine. Okay, so it looks like we don't have any further questions. As I said, you can always email support at mightycause.com for any assistance. Um, thank you so much for everyone who's joined this webinar. I hope it was helpful, and please let us know how we can help. Thanks so much. Bye.